Hey, what's up? It's day 70 something or something of uh, lockdown today. It's also the 70 something today of me wearing sweatpants, uh, as I think most people are. But because um, we've been completely transitioned now to an online learning experience at Varsity, I want to make today's video about thoughts about the education system and thoughts about how we can go improving it and we can take lessons that we've learned from the pandemic and all transitioning online and translate it to make the process of teaching people about the world and giving people skills to use in the world less painful and miserable like it is for a lot of people right now. So let's do it. So for most people, the traditional way of schooling and going through the school system is like 12 years of school and high school and that and then you graduate and then maybe you go do a college degree, maybe you don't, where that's another, you know, four, five, six, so many years you do at a university or something to get a tertiary education, then you go out and start working. Um, that's kind of the educational framework that we idealize in society right now. Um, and it's been interesting because now that I'm in third year of university, I've really started thinking recently about how so much of that system and the time that I've spent in the education system has been not wasted, but perhaps going in the wrong direction. Like, I'm a huge fan of education and all of the benefits it brings to society, and in, in no way I think we should just cancel or can the concept of university or schooling and that, because smarter people equals a smarter workforce, a smarter population equals better technology, a better standard of living for everyone, all of those things. But if I think about back to like what the kind of things that I was doing in high school and that, learning things like just rote memory learning, and uh, you know, struggling to understand these concepts and that that are not not used in the real world, but have been surpassed by better ways of doing things. For example, learning things off by heart, like biological terms and biological processes that could easily be looked up in a textbook, or memorizing facts and that to write in history essays and that. Uh, it's very interesting to me because. All of the things that revolve around memorization are easily um, replaced by computers and the wealth of the internet and that that you can access at any time in the real world. But the skills that come along with those things, like writing essays and learning how biological processes work and how you can use them to your advantage or when something's wrong with your body or when something's wrong with an ecosystem and that, all of that is valuable. And so my first thought that if I could change the education system would be to definitely make every test open book. Um, if you can't fulfill a task or an assignment or a, a test within a specified time limit with a textbook, you're never gonna be able to do it in the real world. You still need to be able to fulfill all outcomes in that. A doctor can't be out there because he's scrolling through his textbook in that right in the middle of an operation. So you need a certain level of competency. But in tests and exams, you should always have access to the internet and always have access to textbooks and that because that's how it's like in the real world. If you can show proficiency in a topic, while you're in under test conditions and you have a textbook in that, then cool, you understand it well enough. But if you can't, then you obviously don't. And then, I think a large part of our education system is not unneeded, but perhaps a bit much for most people. I don't think a lot of people want to go to university for four years and learn all the intricate details of their career or subfield and that, and then only go on to work in one of those small branches. I mean, if I think about my own degree, for example, computer engineering, we do so much work on amplifiers and um, advanced theory and that, Barkhazian criteria and that, oscillators and that. All this is really cool stuff to know if you're going to go design computers or design circuits or design systems. But for the vast majority of computer engineering graduates in South Africa, you're going to go work in software development. If you go look on Google at the computer engineering jobs and scroll down and down and down and down, there's very few embedded software engineers or guys that are going to work with circuits all day or build computer components because that's just not where the job market is in South Africa. In South Africa, the job market revolves around software development. And, you know, we only do a few coding courses and that in our degree. We do some focus on AI and that and some focus on assembly programming, which I'm working on a project now. But the vast majority of stuff is software development. And so after university, we're going to have all these skills and all this knowledge about hardware and, you know, low-level software programming. That's not going to be used. It's not in demand. And so I definitely think that a more narrow focus um, from universities or colleges or even technical institutions would perhaps be beneficial for a lot of people in the world who want to have a skill and want to be useful in the economy, but who don't want to go through four years of advanced theory and nebulous knowledge that, that, that they never end up using. I mean, universities are theoretical degrees. Universities provide theoretical degrees. And a lot of people just want to learn some practical stuff. And so, in particular, you know, technical colleges and that 
more focus on that from government and from industry would be very helpful for a lot of people, I think, and for a lot of companies, because we don't waste all this time learning all these basics and all these things that have been surpassed by automated solutions. And while, yeah, I definitely understand if you want to go do maths and you need to do advanced calculus and that, you've got to learn introductory calculus first. You can't just go and design all these hardcore, you know, big software systems and that without learning the basics of software and maybe some underlying theory first. But I definitely think there's an opportunity to streamline here and maybe perhaps, you know, reduce the length of university degrees and that from four years to two years, where you just learn all the practical stuff, you focus on one niche field and that, and then you go off and work into that field and you can branch out and explore as you see fit. This idea of monolithic degrees where you learn everything you'll ever need in one degree is I think perhaps a bit outdated, especially since there's just so much knowledge in that out there on the internet. Especially with the rise of sites like Udemy and Coursera and that, you know, massive online open courses, massive open online courses, whatever it is, where you can choose your specific niche or your specific skill that you want to learn and then learn it at your own pace, skip sections that you don't want to learn in that. I think that hybrid kind of learning and that where you design your own curriculum is going to become more and more popular as time goes on and as skills in that in certain areas become a lot more valuable than others, especially for software develop development and that you know, with the rise of AI and automation and that, I think a lot of people are going to be very angry for the fact that they spend so much time on this long, big university degree when the on-demand skills and that can be taught um, with a couple of online courses and a couple of months of real, really focused self-study. And, and so I think it's really interesting, especially now that basically we're all doing online degrees, there's a lot to be said for doing stuff at your own pace and doing stuff in your own time. I'm finding now I'm waking up early in the morning at like half five to work and to learn stuff and to work on my project. This practical, I don't think I might have ever gotten done or might have ever made so much progress on if I was doing it in the traditional varsity schedule and the traditional varsity timeline where you have to get up and go to certain lectures during the day and then come back in the afternoon and try to work when you're tired. You know, at the moment, like I worked on maths solidly for two or three weeks and then I've just, just lost it for the rest of the semester and I've been working on other stuff since then because that's worked for me. And I think that flexibility is going to be very important in the future as people try to learn new skills and that more quickly. And we don't, you know, we, perhaps we won't be following this old school varsity tradition of learning these huge big chunks of knowledge in a pre determined, you know, really rigid structure, but kind of like picking and choosing skills from different areas and supplementing it with online education and with people on that. I think it's going to be very interesting. And all of this goes without saying even how stupid the idea of grading kids with certain numbers and certain percentages uh, is really, you know, that value and that really makes you seem like you're being judged and you're being validated. Your worth as a person is represented by that small number and that, especially when you're a young person and, you know, mostly what you do all day is go to school and work on school projects and homework and university stuff. And I don't think my marks at university are an indication of how smart I am or of how well I've mastered the content because the way lecturers set tests and the way projects in that pile up on top of each other, I don't think it's a good indication of how smart I am, how well I've mastered the content in some areas and how, you know, how good of an engineer I'm going to be one day. So, yeah, I see all sides of this because my mom's a teacher and I've been in the school environment for so long. I've got a lot of respect for teachers and educators, but if you're in a position to design coursework or a legislator, a legislator that gets to decide on what kids should learn in that, I would really recommend thinking about perhaps steering kids' education in the direction of projects and of self-guided learning and that, and real applications to the real world. You know, people, kids don't need to be learning old school theory and that if there are new and better ways of doing things on the internet and that. Yeah. If I look at my notes here, and I'm just thinking about, you know, we need to really be equipping people for jobs in the future and for real-world uh, applications of things. And so, yeah, I don't know. If you're in the position to change curriculums and that, really start thinking about how you can benefit your kids in 20, 30 years' time. Because by the time you finish your school education, um, the jobs and that that you were preparing for so many years ago might not even still exist. If you're a young person and that, I can uh, encourage you to carry on pursuing your education and that, whether it's through a big institution or by yourself online or that. There's so much to learn about the world and education makes you a better person and gives you a better chance at life and succeeding in life, I guess. Um, and yeah, just I really would like to see in the future less focus put on grades and fulfilling requirements and fulfilling old school standards of knowledge and performance and that 
and rather working on projects, working on knowledge and working on specific areas of expertise. You know, we don't want everyone to know the same things. That would be really stupid, right? If everyone only knew how to do calculus, where would art come from? Where would uh, doctors come from? And that if people only knew how to do maths and physics and that, we'd be missing a whole subset of society and that. Yet our current education system wants that. You know, we want people to all be the same. We want them all to learn maths, all the biology, all learn English. Uh, doctors, we want all doctors to be exactly the same. We want all engineers to be exactly the same. And that, that's kind of weird, right? We need as many people as possible going in many different avenues of knowledge as possible. And I think the education system in both you know, Europe and America and the Americas and Africa and that could change to reflect that. But that obviously requires long-form policy change, and which is why me, young person, is putting some ideas out on the internet so that maybe it'll influence someone one day. But anyway, that's what I've been thinking about. Let me get back to working on my prescribed <laughs> uh, engineering project right now of a respiration detection system. It's going well, and I'll talk to you about it in the next one. Thanks for watching, eh? Cheers.